because the last time I checked, people see fear and respect these smaller girls and tend to attain to instructions more when threatened by them. For example, buy a bicycle outside, you know, park a bicycle outside your house and just randomly tie vegetables, you know, like beet leaves and water leaves together in a big bunch and place it onto the bicycle. Leave it and travel. You can even travel abroad and you'll come back to find your bicycle intact. Because people will see it as a whole, oh, there's juju in that bicycle and they won't go close to it. However, try it with the Bible or Quran and see what happens. <laughs> Your bicycle will be gone before the blink of an eye. That is how bad things have become. The word of God has been trivialized to no value. Africans, great nations of the world are neither Christians nor Muslims. And yet they prosper because they embrace the religion of their forefathers or decided to create a nation free from politics of religion and respect for all mankind. Islam and Christianity should not be in our institutions, school curriculum, or our national religion. If a religion has to be taught in our schools, let it be that of our culture and forefathers. You can still practice whatever religion you believe in. It is your personal business. Nobody cares. No, no one have to know about it. Just do it outside politics. And it should not be a determinant for employment or who gets to rule us as a nation or as a people. We all had our way of lives and gods before slavery and colonization. <clears throat> Wake up, folks. Wake up, Africa. It is time for you to embrace your tradition. For you are the only people who lack safe purpose and who are ashamed of their heritage. Secondly, it is time to take drastic and revolutionary measures against this corrupt system and all those who tangles in corruption as power is not given anywhere but have to be taken by force yes however the revolution is not about dividing ourselves as a people with different republics. No, it's far from that. But it's about uniting as a team to tumble these corrupt and greed-eating leaders who have refused to let us progress. Because change does not happen by one person alone, but always by a team. Therefore, we have to demand that every politician who have been in politics and who have ruled us or is still holding an important political position between 1970 till now to please resign. And every of their loot that we know of should be returned back to the people and put into social security measures to cover basic necessity for the unemployed and impoverished. 
we will demand that if they have properties more than what are affordable by their paychecks, such properties should be confiscated and turned into state's properties and channeled towards social services like some who have private jets when Nigeria as a nation don't even have a Nigerian airways or plane on her name. Another suggestion is that we will also demand that three to four new political parties be formed by youths between the ages of 25 years of age to maximum 50 years old. Yes. Who said we were supposed to have two political parties anyways? Okay. The two-party system we have before should be cancelled. And those in it should please focus on agricultural development like farm work because we are tired of old ideas and old ways of thinking or doing things which have been the major cause of this calamity we are facing as a people today. Also, hmm. we are tired of having presidents who, co who, who come into power. And after a couple of months, they are severely ill and spend more time in the hospital outside the country than at Asa Rock. Late President Yaradwa came into power for a short as a year and a half. And during that one year and a half, he was hospitalized for more than half of the time and later passed on. President Buhari ruled us in the 80s and then came back and had three failed elections and finally succeeded at the fourth trial which now made him president. And he has barely started ruling. And now he's spending more time in the hospital abroad than what he has spent as president in Nigeria, which now brings us to the question are these people not aware of their health situation before all the die hard effort to becoming presidents? Are they not aware of the severity of their illnesses before this do or die habit to rule? Again, this just clearly depicts the greed behind politics in Nigeria as everyone and everything rotates around reshuffling old leaders who will lead us backwards to occasion instead of taking us forward. You cannot cheat nature or try to cosmetologize it when you are old you are old and certain illnesses comes with old age and that is why president buhari have to accept the fact that there are lots of things he cannot do anymore like before and just resign in peace to enjoy his old age with his family He's not even supposed to be there in the first place anyways. If not for the Bayard system, we have that tend to reshuffle previous leaders into power year after year. Hmm. 
It is like Mugabe of Zimbabwe at 92 years old. He can barely stand on his feet, but still wants to be the chief of staff. Africa, what a shame. Like I said before, we need vibrant, well-informed, well-traveled, brave, and courageous, educated, and well-prepared leaders, period. The youth is about 70% of our population. And if I'm not mistaken, they have the strength and the population to capture power if they want to. Because power is never given. It has to be taken. I've said it multiple times. Nevertheless, there are certain criterias that have to be met if you want to join these new parties or contest for governmental positions. One, as a politician, every allowance you get now will be cut by 70%. Yes. People are hungry. A king cannot be getting fat on food while his subjects are starving to death. Yes. Two. If you hold any post in Nigeria, your children cannot in any way be sent abroad to school. They must attend school where you roll. If the school in your state or constituency are not up to your standard, then build new schools that meet that standard and that every other Nigerian child can attend. If not, please let your children stay at home. Number three, as a politician, the road leading to your house or office must be the same as others. Yours cannot be tied while others need canoe to cross to their houses, especially during rainy season. Number four, as a leader, you should and must prioritize education and grant free and compulsory education from kindergarten to secondary school level and also give grants student loans and bursaries to college and university students to enable them study accordingly because sponsoring children in schools is a very big problem facing poor parents who can barely provide food for their children and also providing social assistance for the poor and less privileged among us should be taken into account especially women and children and our unemployed youth these measures will help to cope crimes number five you should and must not travel abroad for medical treatment without first being admitted into a nigerian hospital and treated by a nigerian doctor unless your disease or sickness needs a specialist that is not anywhere in the landscape of nigeria However, you have to check all other African countries first before taking the decision of traveling outside Africa for medical treatment. Because the countries of the West you all travel to, they, 
they, they built their countries and provided medical uh, uh, resources for their citizens. So you build in your own country so that your citizens too will have a hospital to attend when they are sick. And you don't have to fly down here with our money every time to get treatment. Number six. Another point is you will have to make Christianity and Islam a thing of choice and not politicize or use it to judge individuals in their daily endeavors. You must be well educated with a trajectory of community service both in Africa or Western world and critically understands the situation facing Nigerians firsthand to be able to sensitize and empathize with the vulnerable amongst us in our society. Again, you must be very upright, bold, fair, and ready to uphold and apply the law when needed and treat everyone equally with respect and dignity regardless of their ethnicity, tribe, or religious beliefs or status. Number eight, any confirmed looter of public funds should be sentenced to life imprisonment with hard labor so that our youth can see